A lot of people have attempted to mock Christians and to prove that we are blind followers of an unjust or a lying deity, and have brought up questions like this. Why did God create the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Unknowing to these people that at one point or the other, we have also questioned ourselves and our beliefs in Christ. We are not brute beasts, we are all that we are by choice, which one of them is being a Christian. And in this video I will provide an answer to this question of, why did God create the tree of knowledge of good and evil when he already knew what will happen? This is for Christians who have had this question on their mind and Christians who have said, what will I tell them when I am asked? And to the ones who will come across this video in their quest for answers to life questions and their journey to meet with the Lord. The story of this tree at the beginning of man's existence is a story that has questions about whether God is truly omniscient and does he truly knows the end from the beginning. Well, God does. Every tree in the garden was created by God along with the tree of life in the middle and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God commanded Adam not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for on the day that he eats of it, he will surely die. Let's see how God said it exactly. Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 to 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. If we consider this passage well, we will discover God's intentionality in leaving the tree there. God was not trying to prevent men from accessing the tree. He was leaving men a choice to eat from the tree or not. It boils down to one of the expressions of God's nature of love. Here are the four reasons the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was placed in the garden for man. Number one, the gift of free will, God didn't make robots. He made people who are capable of choosing what they want. God has given everyone the capacity to embrace virtue, make moral and ethical decisions, and have a sincere relationship with him. In Genesis chapter 2 verses 15 to 17, you should take note that God had to point that particular tree out to them. He was indirectly saying, I am going to see what you are going to do about it. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was placed in the garden to provide man with a choice to love and serve God willingly or to rebel against him and reject the one prohibition he had given them. There is no true love without a choice. Their choice to eat from it echoes across generations, showing the danger of free will when we choose not to stay in line with what the master has commanded. It was their decision that led to the human condition as we know it and to the necessity of God's redeeming love. God did not want robots who would obey him without question, but rather beings who would choose to love and obey him. Let me share an analogy with you. Assuming you place a jar of honey and vinegar in a room full of foods, and then you tell your kids they can have all the food in the room except this one, and you give a warning that if they eat from the jar, they would have a serious stomach complication, and you go on and expect that the kids to not eat it, but you cannot take away their free will. And some may say, why did God have to put the tree in the garden to show that men have free will? He could have totally avoided it. First of all, people have said, God is a dictator since he appears to have determined our life. And I have shown in this video that you have free will to either go with what God has chosen for you or go for what you want for yourself. So the reason he kept the tree in the garden is firstly because he has a plan of redemption for mankind in case man fails. This is still a show of his love. Secondly, if your chances to make a choice are taken away, it means you don't have a free will after all. So, God placed the tree in the garden to show that he has a plan for man. But it is left to him to either choose it or do his own will. Number 2. Moral Development There was nothing bad about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and it was not inherently evil. To think otherwise would be to suggest that God created evil, which is not consistent with Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Man, not the tree, was the original source of sin. The decision to follow moral freedom or obey is symbolized by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Being obedient would lead to increased independence, maturity, and knowledge. Number 3. Consequences of Sin 
The tree of knowledge of good and evil was not created to cause sin, but rather to reveal the consequences of sin. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree, they experienced shame, guilt, and separation from God. The tree was a warning of the dangers of disobedience and the consequences of sin. After Adam and Eve sinned, there were dire repercussions. All of these things have been with the earth ever since sin entered it. Evil, sin, suffering, illness, and death. All people are sinners because of Adam and Eve's transgression. According to Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, the serpent enticed Adam and Eve with the statement, You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In other words, you will make your own judgment. Adam and Eve gained knowledge of good and evil, just like God, after eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They also became aware of their nakedness. Then the Lord God declared, Look, the man has learned good and evil like one of us. But because of their transgression of defying God, corruption entered both their lives and the earth. The world has been tormented by evil, sin, sorrow, illness, and death as a result ever since. As I said before, the tree of knowledge of good and evil was not evil by its nature. To claim this would imply that God created something evil. The tree was not the source of sin. Man brought sin through disobedience. God wanted Adam and Eve to develop morally and spiritually, and the tree was a test of their obedience and trust in Him. By examining the fact that Jesus carried the entire curse placed upon Adam and Eve, sin caused misery during delivery, and Jesus experienced the most agony of all as He raised many sons to glory through His own suffering. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was created by God to provide man with a choice to develop moral and spiritual growth, and to reveal the consequences of sin. God did not create the tree to cause sin, but rather to give man the opportunity to choose between good and evil. The story of the Garden of Eden teaches us about the importance of obedience, trust, and the consequences of sin. Number four, God's intention is to share his love with us. God did want people he would shower love on, but who had no choice but to love him in return. Think about it. How frustrating and meaningless would it be to pour your love on somebody you know doesn't have a choice than to love you? Return, you would soon get frustrated. God already has angels who do not have emotions or free will in that sense, and guess what? Some of them failed. And this is why God kept the tree in the garden to not have any puppet beings. Would you choose fellowship and communion with me rather than knowledge of good and evil? Was the question God asked Adam and Eve. Everything about God reflects His nature. God loves us so much that even after the fall of man due to disobedience, He made a way out through which all man can be saved through His Son, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God commendeth His love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. According to Romans chapter 5, verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one may be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. These scriptures resound the love of God for us before the fall and after. God loves mankind, but he will not force his love on us, and if we fail, he will make sure he finds a way of redeeming our mistakes. In conclusion, God placed the tree of knowledge and evil in the garden, because he treated men with importance and not as simple objects of creation. God made us feel important by making the choice to live life of our free will. He does not want to get involved if we don't invite him. The scripture says in Psalms 115 verse 16, it says the heavens is the Lord and the earth has he given to the children of men. This means that even though God created the earth, he gave all authority over it to men and he cannot just do anything except man allows him because earth is man's property. This is also the answer to the question of why there is sickness, pain, and poverty. It is because men are facing the consequences of not following God's will. God's will is perfect for us, but he will never force it on us. The reason why God created the tree of knowledge of good and evil is because he handed over the reins of our life to us. That's all for today.
Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button and continue to bask in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. See you next time. Cheers.